worship leader, to the powerful youth praise team, yeah. and to our musicians. We honor you today, Lord, because we know that if it had not been for you on our side, we would not have made it. Our text this morning can be found in Hebrews the third chapter, and I will be reading from the International Virgin, the NIV, so you can follow along with me. Hebrews, the third chapter, the 12th through the 14th verse, and it reads, Watch out, brothers and sisters, so that there won't be any of you an evil, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage each other daily while it is still called today, so that none of you is hardened by sin's deception. 
For we have become participants in Christ if we hold firmly until the end of the reality that we had at the start. Let us pray. Merciful, gracious, eternal Father, we continue to give you praise and we continue to give you glory, even in this moment, because you are still worthy. We call upon you, O oh God, right now, because without you, I can do it, not do anything. So I call upon your Holy Spirit now, O oh God, to bless your servant, to fill her with your Holy Spirit, to give her the words boldly, clearly, and plainly that your people will be able to hear. Bless your people now, Lord, those who have tuned in to hear a word. Lord, allow them to receive and to respond that, Lord, you may be given all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If I can have your attention for a few minutes, I would like to share with you from the topic, Stay the Course. While COVID has taken the lives of over a half a million people in the U.S., many are still trying to bounce back from its effects that have caused devastating financial hardships, emotional and mental stress, along with families having to make personal adjustments yeah. that they haven't been accustomed to in order to accommodate their family needs. Along with that, the spread of wickedness and evil continues to invade our communities, neighborhoods, and country. Adversities in life can tempt Christians to give up faith. This is somewhat similar to what the Jewish Christians were experiencing during the time that this epistle was written. It was during the time when persecution was a real problem for the Jewish Christians in Rome who had converted to Christianity and the concern was these Christians would return to their Jewish faith. Yeah. How do you stay the course when the adversities of life tempt you to give up your faith. Mm. You need to guard your heart. Be careful, my brothers and sisters, that not any one of you have a wicked, unbelieving heart that turns away from the Lord. My beloved brothers and sisters, guarding your hearts means protecting yourselves from all things that would come to harm you, especially those things that tempt us to give up our faith. Yeah. We have been warned in our text to check our hearts to make sure that they are not filled with evil and unbelief right. that causes us to turn away from God. Once we've identified ourselves with Christ, we have not only accepted him as Savior, but we have agreed to give him lordship over our lives. That means he is still Lord during the good times, and he's still Lord during the bad times. God wants to remind us that we can be confident in God's promise because God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. 
While it is important to understand that God causes all things to work together as a plan yeah. for those who love him, it's also important that you understand that Satan uses adversities to tempt us to give up our faith, stop believing in God, yeah. so that we can turn away from God. All right. The word of God reminds us that Satan prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour, especially Christians. His only plan is to destroy us, and he tries to do this by tempting us to turn away from God, our true friend, yeah. who sent his son, Jesus, to give his life as ransom so that each of us would no longer be enemies, but sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. Yeah. If we're not careful to guard our hearts, Satan will use adversities in life to tempt us to go back to our old ways, to our old attitudes, and to our old sinful and disobedient life. Yeah. His plan is to point us in the wrong direction and drive us away from God who loves us unconditionally. Sometimes adversities will cause us to wonder if there's a bright side somewhere. The enemy will even use them to make you doubt and question whether you should have stayed in a relationship that God brought you out of. Guard your heart. Don't be deceived by the enemy's misleading devices, temptations, and lies. He is a user and will use any measure to trick you into turning away from God. There's a great amount of deceitfulness in sin. It looks promises, promising, but it pays all nothing. Right. Listen, my sisters and brothers, turning our hearts from God and forfeiting our spiritual inheritance that Christ has already made possible for those who have continued to trust on rely on him is dangerous. If the Israelites, God's own people, who rebelled had experienced the miraculous deliverance from Egypt and were subjects of God's grace, but because of their disobedience and unbelieving heart received God's judgment and were not allowed to enter the promised land, how in the world can we expect anything different if we rebel in disobedience and unbelief, turning our hearts from God? But thank God we are ne never left alone. No matter what adversities we face in life, because we have the promises of God's word. Jesus warns and encourages his disciples beforehand. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. You see, we are not left defenseless because Jesus has given every Christian the comforter, the gift of the Holy Spirit, who will teach us all things and help guard our hearts from all evil that leads to sinful rebellion against God. We know this to be true because his truth reminds us that no temptation has overtaken you 
accept what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So stay the course when adversities in life tempt to give, when you tempt, are tempted to give up your faith. Guard your heart, but also you need to give encouragement. We are instructed, according to the text, to encourage each other daily while it is still today so that none of you are hardened by sin's deception. The writer of this letter understood the desire of God's heart and the importance of encouraging one another. But more importantly, he understood its power and the impact it could have on another person's life. Giving encouragement gives a person hope. That's power, y'all. Yeah. Giving encouragement will manifest life in the midst of your adversities and mine, and even when we fall short. That's power, y'all. The opposite of encourage is discourage. And that's exactly what the enemy wants to do. That's right. Discourage us because he knows that if he can discourage us, that will lead to distrust. And distrust leads to unbelief and unbelief to sin and sin is rebellious against God. Right. Encouragement is a powerful tool. That is why the writer emphasized the urgency. Do it while it is still today. Yeah. You can't wait because the devil knows that we have been given a power tool that can change a person's life. Yeah. When you give encouragement, it motivates people. When you give encouragement, a person's confidence grows. They feel loved, valued, and cared for. The writer understood the urgent need for believers to help and encourage one another. It was a difficult time for the Christians who were being persecuted because of their faith in Jesus Christ as the Messiah. What better time for them to encourage one another. And I'll ask you, and what better time than now for us to give encouragement? Your encouragement through a text message may be the very text they needed to be received that kept that person from going over the deep end. Your encouraging card mailed might be the very thing that person needed to read to encourage them that the Lord loves them. Your telephone call may be the voice they need to hear to lift up their spirits. Your prayers may be the very prayer that God uses to bring healing to that person. Seeing your smiling face on FaceTime could help that person get their mind off their problems. And just maybe, if you are not ashamed to share your testimony, it may be the one that make them feel that they are not alone and be encouraged that if God forgave you, then I know he will forgive me too. On the other hand, it becomes a blessing to us. Encouraging others should give us just the same amount of joy to give it to others as it is to receive it. Yeah. There's that word joy again. <laughs> God's word reminds us that we are to carry one another's burden. And in this, you will fulfill the requirements of the law of Christian love. Adversities of life cannot be avoided and the enemy will use them to tempt us to give up our faith. But we can stay the course 
if we guard our hearts, give encouragement to one another, but hold on, grab hold to our faith firmly and remain faithful. If we grab hold of our faith and don't let go, remain faithful, we will witness God's faithfulness and receive our eternal inheritance that he promised us in the very beginning. For we have, as the word declares, have become participants in Christ if we hold firmly until the end the reality that we had at the start. By the grace of God, it was faith in Jesus in the beginning, and by the grace of God, it will be faith in Jesus that will lead us home. All right. yeah. God is fair. He will not forget your work you did and the love you showed him by helping others. But you must continue to remain faithful, showing the same diligence as inspired by the hope that is in you. Many will start the race ready, but few will finish the race. Mm. Only those who held on firmly to their faith yeah. and remained faithful will receive their reward. Yeah. The race is not given to the swift or to the strong, but the one who endures to the end. No matter the adversary adversities in life, whatever comes your way, yeah, yeah. if you grab hold to your faith yeah. and remain faithful to the end, God has a blessing waiting for you in the end. Yes. Keep praying during the good times yeah. and bad times. Yeah. Keep preaching yeah. when you feel like it and when you don't. Keep teaching yeah. if it's only one or ten students. Keep pressing through your pain and joy. Keep serving, keep serving, keep serving, keep pushing. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. We have an eternal blessing waiting over yonder with each one of our names on it. What's for me is for me. It has my name on it, just for me. What's for you and you and you is for you. It has your name on it. If we grab hold to your faith firmly and remain faithful, we will become partaker of all the blessings that came with Christ's sacrifice. Hold on. Hold on. Hang in there. Don't give up. Hold on. Hang in there. Don't give up. God is faithful. He won't let you down. God is faithful. Just hold Guard your heart. Hold on. Encourage one another. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Guard your heart. Encourage one another. Grab hold to your faith firmly and remain faithful until the end. The enemy will use our adversities to tempt us to give up our faith, but we can defeat him and stay the course if we guard our hearts, give encouragement to one another 
grab hold to our faith and remain faithful. Amen. of the church are open, but can I share with you that none of these privileges are granted to you if you do not have a relationship with Christ. These are the privileges and the great eternal inheritance that Christians will have. But it's only if they have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So if you are out there on virtual land and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you not have confessed and asked forgiveness of your sins, and if you have not made that personal decision, you know, you can do it right now. You can do it right now. All you have to do is tell him that you need to be forgiven for your sins and that you want him to be lordship over your life. That you believe that he is the son of God and that he died for your sins and that God raised him for you from the dead. And because of your faith and what you confess this morning, you are saved. You are saved. Now there's information that you may see flashing across the screen. Take advantage of that and contact us. And we will be glad to pray with you. We'll be glad to answer any questions that you would have. We will be glad to walk you through your discipleship process. So if you are willing and ready, because God is calling, don't miss that opportunity today. Don't miss that opportunity. Don't miss that opportunity. You don't know what's promised tomorrow, but today, he's waiting for you.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for sharing with us today, for sitting in our presence. Oh God, for allowing us once again to give you all the glory and all the praise. Oh God, we ask now that you will continue to be with us through the days ahead. May the grace of God and the peace of Jesus Christ and the communion of his Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of us until we meet again. Amen.